Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by Airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at Airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. Hi, this is Ed Cohen in San Diego, California. And it's July 2. Welcome to Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast unit of globalbusinessnews.net. Globalbusinessnews.net was founded in 03 uh by me with a friend who used to be a developer at intel and since then google analytics has traced 1.2 million reader page views on our sites and since april of 2020 uh, global tv talk show has been doing this kind of a conference this kind of a meeting we call it the global meeting room on global tv talk show and our special guest today is Kelly Ravitz, who's an executive with Global Mobility Solutions. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me, Ed. So tell us, you've been busy the past year and a half? I actually have been very busy the last Good. year and a half, which, which I have to tell you, I'm, I'm very thankful for, because I know some people have not been. So I have actually been pretty busy signing new business and and keeping up with the trends and figure out what's going on in this new world that we're living in. So have you been signing new business in Nashville or, or in Phoenix? Where? I've been signing. I actually am not. I don't have a specific region. I work all over the globe. So I've signed business in Canada and Florida and California. Um, I don't do actually, oddly enough, I don't do a lot of business in the Phoenix area, but I uh -huh. do the rest of the rest of the country and the world. So what is so special about the service that you offer that getting companies in this crazy environment we've been in the past 14 months? What, why are you successful and others are not? Well, because, because they have me. <laughs> well, I would think I'm that's a, tr a, tr a trustworthiness uh, um, and that is uh, hard to come by. I, I do. I just think that, you know, like everyone, we were adapting and changing to the world that we're living in and finding ways to be a little bit more outside the box because it's, you know, it's just a tough, it's tough out there, obviously. So we're just trying to, you know, look at trends and see what's going on and really look to the future as well, because I personally don't feel like this will be forever. So we have to look to the future of what the future is going to look like and not just the, what we're living in right now. Well, that's, that's really good. So I want to ask you a couple of questions, but first I want to find out more about yourself. Okay. Sure, so, um, You've been in Phoenix a long time. How long have you been there? I have. I've been in Phoenix for 35 years now. Oh, my God. Wow. Crazy enough. I know. I moved out here my senior year of high school. So I've been here pretty much ever since. Yeah, great. So um, the, the, do you live in the North area or in, in the Scottsdale area? Where, where do you live? I just recently moved during COVID, which was an experience all in, in and of itself, mm -hmm. which also has helped me with, you know, with what I'm doing selling, because I did move during this pandemic. 
Um, I did now currently live, I was in Scottsdale and I now currently live in Glendale, if you're familiar with the area. A little bit, yeah. Glendale is near the uh, football stadium. It is. I'm a, well, I'm not that far west, but I am in Arrowhead Ranch area, if, you, if you're familiar with that area. Yes, I am. It's a nice area. I know some people there. Yeah. Um, and, and it's very near uh, Peoria then. It is. The, the yes. Padres place. It sure is. That's about a mile and a half from where I live. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. We went to some of those restaurants right near the... Uh, yeah, Ballpark. P83. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so our family has a couple of investment condos in um, uh, Anasazi Village, which is across from the Paradise Valley Mall. On I Cactus. know where, it, where that's at. I know exactly where that's at. I play golf over there. Uh, oh, on yeah. The right behind it. <laughs> right, right. And so yeah. uh, that's... Uh, um, I mean, those those condos that we've had uh, now several years, uh, they've during the pandemic they've been absolutely almost a hundred percent occupancy. Yeah, I can imagine, and they and, have a really great restaurant right across the street called Oink. I don't know if you've been there. It's delicious. Yeah, uh, right, <laughs> if you like bacon, right? I, well, I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yes, I know, and In and Out is down the street, and that's yes. a favorite. Hunt. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, in uh, in the Phoenix metro area, uh, mm -hmm. it's actually been booming, and it's become uh, the one of the highest, fastest growing economies for basically manufacturing, not mm -hmm. just people escaping California, but uh, but it's like a manufacturing uh, over in Chandler with yes, Intel, in Chandler. Yes. and then well, just all over the place, not just Chandler. Yeah, Avondale is booming. So yeah, parts of Glendale are booming. I have a group move coming into the Glendale area from California. So yeah, it's it is definitely booming. And I, I do attribute some of that obviously to people moving from California coming here. Between here and Texas, we're we're getting lots of Californians in our area. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? All of the Californians moving out from here, and I live in San Diego here. Mm -hmm. Um uh it's 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 actually uh you would never know it because the freeways are clogged. <laughs> well, they always are. I have a lot of business. I have a lot of business in California, so I, I think I made the mistake of renting a car once in LA and once in San Francisco, and said no more. <laughs> no, that's it. No. Okay, so let's talk about the relocation industry, mobility Absolutely. industry. Um, it's certainly changing, then, and in some regards, it's not changing at all, right? Correct. I've, I've been in the business. I am on my 34th year in the business. So I've been doing it pretty much my whole life. It's all I've ever done is real estate and relocation. So I've, I've definitely been around the block and I've seen the ups and downs. And, you know, right now the market, the real estate market, as I'm sure you're aware, is booming through the roof and the interest rates are low. So that's really great for us in the industry because that's how we all make our money, of course. So it's, you know, that's, it's, but I've seen different trends, obviously, with people working from home. But as I'm sure you're aware, you know, not everyone can work from home. It's not, you know, it's not something that a doctor or a nurse or you know, manufacturing or different companies, it's not something that they can do. So, we, you know, we're trying to tailor those needs to the folks that are still having to move and, and work on site. So um, what about digital? How is digital uh, tr transform transformation to digital impacting uh, GMS and, and you? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, digital is, is definitely impacting it because like for me personally, you know, working from home is not something I ever did. I traveled quite a bit. I was gone on the road 85% of the time. And one of my last trips was from, came home from Canada and I've been home ever since, since March of 2020. So, you know, yes, it, it does impact it, you know, for me personally, I, you know, and I think, you know, my colleagues as well, you know, that personal touch and meeting with people in person and having that, you know, face to face, it does change that zoom is great and, you know, go to and all of those things are wonderful, but it's just, there's really just no replacement for being with somebody in person and, and having that team collaborative team that you're working with in the office and those different things. But it has, you know, obviously changed our industry, you know, with people working from home and not really relocating or, you know, relocating later, you know, there's been a lot of relocations on hold. 
you know, again, assignments, you can't do that because you still need to go and do your assignment. And typically that's, you know, in person. So it definitely has made a change in our industry. But I, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I feel like this is a block of time. It's not going to be forever. And I think there will be a little hybrid going forward that, you know, people do want to work from home and some people want to go to the office. So I think, you know, we just kind of have to work through that and figure out what makes the most sense overall in our industry and how that will impact, you know, different roles and different positions and, jo you know, jobs and, and, you know, companies and how they want to, to work with their employees. I find tech companies, it's a little bit easier the the technology with a tech company, obviously, um, but some, some clients can't do that. So we have to, we still have to think about moving forward and what that looks like in the future. So let me ask you about uh, the real estate business. Uh, yes, of course. Im impacting the relocation business. Um, people who are being relocated are, are given help from the company. Mm -hmm. And how much help? Because if they're coming into town and they're going to want to buy a house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's another question. Uh, which we'll get back to. But first, let's talk about the first thing here. Let's assume that uh, relocate, I'm being relocated and the company uh, is going to give me some kind of help to secure a property. Um, but the property is uh, being challenged by other people. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't care whether I need a home because I'm relocating, but they want it. They, for some reason, they want that same house and they're going to bid more. And Correct. so w w are companies helping me to, uh, are they giving me money, loaning me money so I could be qualified to pay a higher price? Well, it really depends on the company. Some companies will and some companies won't. It's been, you know, it has been a challenge. The, the market is crazy and not just for buying a home, even for renters. Finding a, a place to live, even corporate housing, where it's an interim housing has been very challenging because the market has is, is been, you know, so crazy that, you know, in like the areas like Austin and even here in Phoenix and Dallas and those different areas, they're finding it harder to find places to purchase or even rent, like I said. So, but you know, some clients will absolutely pay those costs because it's what the market is bearing. It's not necessarily, you know, one-offs. It's really what the market as a whole is doing. If it was a one-off, I think that that average would be a lot less, but clients are helping their employees move, whether that's a purchase or a rent um, based on what the market is bearing. So, um... Are they worried? Are the, are the clients worried? The corporate clients are they worried about um, getting stuck with a an overpriced home in inventory later? I will I will tell you from my experience, and like I said, I've been doing this quite a long time, and you know buyouts were very very popular back in the day, and then when the market crashed in two thousand eight, two thousand nine ish area. And clients were stuck with lots of homes in inventory costing, you know, quite a bit of money that that trend kind of went down a little bit, whereas I can only speak for myself personally, but a lot of my clients don't even offer that guaranteed offer anymore for that simple reason. And, you know, being in the real estate business since I was 18 years old, I, you know, I've seen the ups and downs and the market goes up and it definitely has to come down at some point. So that risk is a little, um, a little bit harder, especially now during this big boom that we're seeing. So I will say probably less than 5% of my clients even offer a guaranteed offer at this point. They're really more trending towards that buyer value option where there has to be an offer on the home and you know, go through that process where it's not necessarily going to be an inventory property. So I see that trending out a little bit. Interesting. And, and on rentals, um, are they opting for temp housing that is extended and extended and extended? Um, I think they will try to do as much as they can, but as, as I'm sure you're aware, temporary housing is not cheap. So that's, you know, it's a very high ticket item. So most of them are, are going to put, you know, limits on that and help where they can, but that's not going to be forever. So they're, you know, at some point an employee will have to pick up those costs if they're unable to find a place. 
you know, our, our best advice to anybody that's buying or renting is to come prepared to either make an offer, have all your, all your documents put together, even write letters that kind of for reasons why you're looking for this particular property. So anything that's really going to give you a leg up, you know, obviously if, if people are bidding and, and, and offering a lot more money, that's a different concept, but, but being prepared and ready to make those offers and having every, all your ducks in a row is going to help you be in a better position when you go to buy or rent a property. And in rental, um, uh, is that in an apartment as well, uh, or condo, uh, as well as a, a, a home, single family home renting? I, I will tell you, we've seen, we've seen a crunch on every every part of rental, whether that's an apartment, a condo, a townhouse, a, a single family home, there has been, there has been a shortage across the board. Right. So the prices are up. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but it hasn't hit a, a wall. Apparently there's, there's still places for people to move to. There are, it's just the options are a little slimmer. So instead of maybe a, you know, a 30 minute commute, you might have a 45 to an hour commute because you have to go a little further out. So, I mean, right now, knock on wood, there's still properties, but they're just, fi- they're becoming harder to find because especially with the influx coming in for, you know, to different areas. And, I, and again, I'll use, you know, Austin or Dallas or, you know, Phoenix area um, because you're having such an influx coming in that it's, it's making those properties become more, um, more scarce. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a timely announcement. Hi, I'm Sergei Gorbatov. I'm Angela Lane. Together we are researchers, writers and practitioners in the field of human resources. And we've also been multi-country, multi-assignment career experts. We owe our professional development and growth to a very large extent to the international assignment opportunities that we have had. But in a world where distributed work may become the norm, we also want to understand what will happen to the nature, duration and purpose of international assignments. Together with our colleague Julian Dalzell from the University of South Carolina, we're undertaking a study on the future of expatriation. And we'd value your contribution. You can participate in this important study by completing a simple 10 minute questionnaire. Access the questionnaire by typing in your browser tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. That's tinyurl.com forward slash expert study. You can also find the link here on Ed's website next to this video. Thank you for joining us in this study. In return for your contribution, we'll provide you with a copy of our research. And of course, you'll be invited to an exclusive webinar hosted by Ed, where we will share our findings right here on Global Business News. And so please go to tinyurl.com forward slash expat study. Take the survey so that we can better understand the future of expatriation. Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. 
coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. Kelly Rabbits, this has been really interesting. Fast paced, but right on target. <laughs> um, I mean, I really like it. So tell me about GMS. How, how has GMS changed in the last 14 months as a result of the pandemic? Um, to be honest, like GMS, and again, so thankful that, you know, we've been really steady and our, you know, our business has been very steady. We haven't really hit a lot of lull, lulls or lows. And, you know, one of the great things about GMS is that we are a debt-free company and we're, you know, we are independently owned. So it gives us a little bit more um, leverage because we don't, we're not, you know, broken off into different divisions of, you know, real estate, corporate housing, van line, et cetera. So, you know, we have, you know, thank, thankfully we've been pretty steady and, you know, of course things have changed. We're not in the office anymore, like all most, most companies and, you know, using zoom and go to, and those different things and not traveling, not doing any business travel, but overall, I, I will tell you, I, you know, as, as we all were, we were concerned in the beginning, but we've been pretty steady and, you know, we've had, you know, been signing business and having people, you know, hiring, you know, having job openings. So we, you know, we've been very blessed and, you know, I attribute that to the great company that I work for. Well, lucky you. That's great. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you guys hiring? <laughs> I, we actually are. <laughs> Interesting. We are. Yes, we're hiring. I believe right now we have some slots open for a, a global assignment manager and some coaches. So yeah, I mean, look online and you can see, I know we have some on our career side, we have some, some jobs open right now. Okay, so let's talk about what things look like in the fall. Um, let's just say September one. Okay, mm -hmm. just for a round number. Uh, and the idea that the uh, worldwide ERC is uh, going to hold a meeting in sh a live meeting in Chicago. Can't wait. Um, I know that that seems to be um, high interest. Yes, I will. I will tell you. I mean, again, for myself personally, it's you know, ERC is always a great, great event. They always put on a great event and, you know, most clients will show up. I, I guarantee you this year, it'll be so over flooded because people are so excited to get back to seeing their colleagues and their vendors and clients that it should be a real exciting ERC this year. A little different than the past, I think. Yeah. Okay. What about vaccinations? Have you, are you worried about people not being vaccinated? Uh, me personally, I, I find that to be a very personal choice. So I, you know, I would never really ask anybody that question and, you know, whatever somebody's comfortable with, because, you know, there's lots of different information out there, whether you've had COVID, I, I personally, my family has had COVID. So we, we all have antibodies. So it's just, you know, it's a, I think that's a, you know, definitely a, a choice between, you know, a, 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 an individual and their physician to make that decision. Um, but I, you know, I, I would hope that we all, we all take everybody into consideration and, you know, everybody's health is important, but I personally don't find that to be a make or break situation. I think it's just something that's a very personal choice. Well said. So as a, as a broadcaster, I have to ask these questions. Of or course. Else, or else people will think it's too softball-y. Oh, no, that's <laughs> fine. I, I'll knock it out of the park either way. You let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, this is great. Well, thank you, Kelly Rabbits, for being our guest on Global TV Talk Show, and I welcome you to come back. Yeah, I would love to come back, and thank you so much for having me, Ed. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. This is Ed in San Diego, and this has been Global TV Talk Show. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day. 
and stay safe.